So what you're telling me is that the G1 Climax 33 tournament starts today here in Sapporo. We're, we're not charging anybody anything. We're giving this whole thing away for free. That's what they call a loss leader, Kevin. <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to, how we're supposed to afford all of this. We got people we got to pay. We got crew. We got staff. Oh. What? We got thousands of people attending live. Hi everybody. Welcome. It's the pregame show as we kick off G1 Climax 33. We're here in not snowy, not sunny, but rather stormy Sapporo. A little rain upon the scene here, Chris. Well, there you go. Does that bode well for one of our entrants here? Perhaps for a hat trick for Kostiko on, Well, on the way, could match Masahiro Chono's record of five this year? I'm okay, so we'll talk about it during the broadcast, of course, but you know, are you taking Okada or the field? It's the largest field at 32, well, tremendously large field, and split up in four blocks. Yeah, but so what? Could be everything. Could be that's all that matters. We start today with A and B block. Tomorrow, C and D. By the way, tomorrow. somebody that did but these previews about these blocks have been pretty fantastic yeah I know but I mean so much to get into but I guess everybody's been talking about especially after the press conference yesterday a block and all of this tension everyone hates each other right it's the it's some of the best stuff in professional wrestling it, it, where it, everybody it. hates one another nobody gets along and it all adds up to, well, some, some great action and some headaches for the office. A Block Island is what I would call it. Our cameraman, I think, is holding in a sneeze, so let's start to move. Yoshihashi versus El Fantasmo kicks off the tournament. Rematch of a meeting last year in Osaka. And this is the B Block getting off to, I think, a successful start for... Uh, El Fantasmo, as much as, like, it seems to be, this seems to be the annual rib now. Yeah. On me. Thanks to the press conference. You yesterday. loved it. Check it out. He Look got to, Chris got to stretch his creative legs, got to uh, translate on the fly, and also uh, edit on the fly, which is trickier than anything. Yoshihashi, uh, very, very much a sleeper pick this year. We'll see how he does. Uh, Chase Owens, Gabe Kitt. I wouldn't want to be Chase Owens at this block, but he's got the chance to kind of sneakily, quietly sneak through because everybody hates each other, and I think everybody's proud that Chase is there. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, Gabe is so hot that, that he's liable to make a mistake. Um, I think we're all liable for a ton of damages when it comes to Gabe Kid in this turn. He worries me. Yes. He worries everybody in this company. Of course. Um, I think he worries a lot of the fans in attendance, quite frankly. there's I mean, there's a ton to get into uh, with Gabe Kid. Um, if Chase doesn't have his guard all the way up, then he might not make it today, too. Returning Tangaloa versus Kenta. An interesting personal rivalry. Uh, Tangalo, of course, has been on the injured list for quite some time and has been healed, but again, just waiting on that moment to return, and it's now for the G1. Uh, to me, this reeks of uh, a Tangaloa victory over Kenta here today. Yeah, I think don't sleep on Tangaloa in this tournament. Um, he was in that much like Tamatonga, and Tamatonga made it to the semi-finals last year coming out of being expelled from Bullet Club. Right. Tangaloa could have had that spark lit under him but suffered that knee injury last May. Now finally back, he can pick up where he left off. And of course, everybody's been talking about Shota Umino Ren Narita since the two of them came back from excursion. And now here we are. Uh, they never have been a good fit as tag partners. They do not like each other and they meet in the A block. Who you got? Well, I mean, if you think back to their young lion days, Ren Narita never beat Shota Umino. It's been something like 052, you know, when it comes to Umino and Narita. Um, so, you know, I think they're the form you say Shota Umino, but I think nobody is, out of all the hotheads in this tournament, nobody is more composed than Ren Narita. If everybody is a hothead, whoever doesn't come out successful, of the hotheads, won't really have much of a leg to stand on. Brenda Rita needs a win here today. He needs it much more than Shota Ubino. We'll see what happens. Kazuchiko Okada versus uh, the great Okada. We talked about Okada, we know his greatness, looking for the three-peat, making history all over. 
But I, as soon as I saw this batch, I said, smells like an upset to me. Smells like it could be the Great Okan coming out on top tonight. The yeah, first time we've seen a Great Okan versus Kazuchika Okada one-on-one -on -one since November of 2020. Um, and I think Great Okan has something up his sleeve, usually very verbose, very apt for speaking, delivered no comment in the press conference yesterday, um, which gives the width of he's got something in mind for this tournament and wants to be more focused than ever. If he has a new move, if he has a physical surprise, could spell the difference. If he's trying to get some sort of psychological edge on the Rainmaker, good luck. Um, and we'll see what happens. We know Okada's been dominant in the beginnings of tournaments. He's only dropped a couple at the start, a couple of times. We'll talk about that, his history in this. But, I mean, he's legendary. And that's where we are now with Okada. We'll see what happens. Uh, Yoda Suji, Kaito Kiyomiya. Oh, boy. <laughs> we only have a 20-minute time limit for all of these matches, by the way. So the possibility of more draws is on the table, 20 instead of 30. But this is another one. How do you pick this? Man, I mean, if it, if we're going on the knack, the feel, the superstar status, as much as Kaito Kimiya has done a lot in pro wrestling, Noah, Suji has blown everybody out the water. Certainly when it comes to having a big mouth, and when you come out in an interview and call somebody from another <laughs> company an effing idiot with no sense of the business, right? right. There's going to be some receipts in there. So, you know, I mean, let's see you know, how aggressive Kaito Kiyomiya is because he has to be aggressive. He has to win because in New Japan fans' memories, not a great record. Yeah, he's kind of a bitch. Taichi versus Will Ospreay. These two know each other. They've been at each other since the beginning of the year. And now here we are meeting in the G1. It's a semi-final match in a big spot. And Osprey wants to get back, wants to win the G1 this year. Taichi coming in as healthy as he's going to be at the beginning of this tournament. And this is another one where here in his home prefecture, in his backyard, Taichi could pull that big victory. Of course, we were in Taichi's backyard of Sapporo back in February where they faced off the last time. Will Ospreay coming out on top. Will Ospreay now, of course, more momentum than ever. IWGP US Champion once again. But, you know, you add in that X factor of the crowd in midsummer. Taichi, very, very successful here in the G1. So, you know, it's a hard one to read on us. Wins over Naito, wins over uh, Minoru Suzuki in this tournament, in this building. So we'll see how the semifinal goes. And then, of course, main event. Sonata versus Hikaleo, and out of all the matchups you said, day one, curious, and you were the first one to bring it to my attention, curious that Sonata and Hikaleo would be the main event. You would think Okada versus uh, Great Okan, or perhaps Yoda Suji, Kaito Kimi, a couple of different directions you could have gone, but the world champion as the defending champ, as the representative champion against Hikaleo, who, it's a big spot in the main event. Sure, it makes a lot of sense for them to put the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion in the main event. When you think about it, that's your default position, has been in the past. Sonata still, you know, I think in the eyes of a lot of the public, has much to prove as a champion. Perhaps that's what the thinking was. Let's put Sonata in this spot. Or perhaps the thinking was, what if there's a big upset to be the major headline coming out of day one of the G1 Climax? And I wonder... Yo, whether that's the message, I think certainly that Hikaleo is feeling right now and the pressure that he has to beat the champion. Enemy. So that's the rundown for today. Chris and I will be live at Brinkside and we're giving the store away. It's all for free. So if you're a subscriber, you get to enjoy it. If you're a non-subscriber, just go to njpwworld.com and you'll be able to watch the whole event from start to finish. We hope you stick around and, uh, and sign up. Don't forget tomorrow's free as well. Uh, but this is the start of the epic journey that is the G1 Climax, the summer tradition. It's hot, it's gonna be rotten, muggy, miserable weather. Uh, and by the end of it, we're all gonna be at each other's throats. But that's what makes it so much fun. That's why we love each other so much, isn't it, Chris? <laughs> all right, so Chris and I are inside just a bit right here at njpwworld.com. Free. <laughs>